What up world, it's Fess with Reverb. I'm back in the studio talking wavetable synthesis today with the Osiris Bifidelity Wavetable Oscillator. I first got to see this module at the 2021 KnobCon. I was excited then. I uh, wrote a little bit about it that you could read up on Reverb and I'm more excited to have it in the studio now and to share its glory with you all. So there's a few wavetable oscillators you can get in the Eurorack format, like the one from Erica Semps or the 4MS Spherical Wavetable Navigator. That's a great wavetable oscillator as well. But now we have the Osiris, and the Osiris is a bifidelity wavetable oscillator. And of course, you could customize your own waves and upload it via SD card, but more on that later. The Osiris is a 12 HP, it packs a lot of power in this small frame. You can get deep control over morphing your waves and deep control over your timbre and your overall harmonics and even add some FM. Wavetables are fantastic, but for me personally, they've always seemed a little bit intimidating, especially in the software format. I found that all the wave options kind of get overwhelming and you're either looking at a chart that's full of waveforms and you want to go through all those waveforms and tweak every little bit of it. And then next thing you know, you're not really making music. You're just tweaking waveforms. That's why I've always enjoyed wavetables in the Eurorack format because it puts all that power behind just a few knobs and you can get down to just shaping your wavetable how you want and actually go about making music. This is the newest module from Mob Bat Modular created by Corey Banks, AKA B-Boy Tech, and also developed in collaboration with S. Madison, a musician and electronic instrument maker who also designed the operating systems for the Electron model samples and cycles. So let's just get into the features of the Osiris. So there's four banks of 32 by 32 wavetables each with 128 wavetables in each bank. You can get through the banks by hitting this bank button here. Of course, you could also customize and upload your own wavetables, more on that later, but you would put them in this SD card right here. And then you also can scroll through the wavetables, of course, by using this X knob, which horizontally goes across the wave. And then the Y knob, vertically goes up and down the wave table. So you're basically selecting new waves. And the cool thing about it is you can morph all of that together and just create waveforms that will take you about four or five modules to create in most cases. You also have a subwave oscillator that will play on its own you have an output for the subwave, or you could just turn up the submix and it'll just layer on top of the fundamental frequency. And you could change your subwave. So you got square wave for the sub, sine, triangle, and a minus one or a minus two of whatever waveform that you're on. So that's really cool. And then also what's really unique with the Osiris is bifidelity. This is a term that was coined by Corey Banks. And it basically means that this offers not only hi-fi 96 kilohertz, but you could turn this fidelity knob and go into a lo-fi territory. This is something that Corey Banks stated that reminded him of the old Amiga computers and the sound that that offered. So you get really crunchy when you get into the lo-fi setting. And the really, really cool thing about the Osiris is the fact that it has a VCA built into it. That's how I've been sort of triggering the notes here. I can just put it in drone mode by opening up the decay fully. Or you could trigger it. This is a great oscillator for somebody who is just getting into modular and maybe wants something that they don't need a VCA or even dare I say a filter to get some great tones out of. This is the wavetable oscillator, but in my mind, this is the full synth voice because of the fact that it has the VCA built into it. You have your trigger input right here and you have a trigger button. So this offers a lot in a 12 HP package. So now I wanna run through the timbre modes and the timbre amount here. So the timbre amount just obviously adds more depth to the harmonics. 
But if you switch the modes, you have unison, which layers a second oscillator. You've got bend, which compresses the waveform to a thinner shape. You've got fold, which is like running your waves through a wave folder. Then you have sync, which repeats the cycle count and makes the edges soft. You can turn that on or off with the sync button down here. Then you have noise, which just adds noise to the waveform. Sometimes that's good when you're trying to make some percussive hits. Then you have this FM times one and times eight, and that applies like a phase modulation to the oscillator using the same waveform, which is FM synthesis. Cool, so let's just actually have some real fun with this and get into some patches. So, like, like I mentioned earlier, wavetables are really great um, on their own, but they're even better when you add modulation, of course. So right here, I just have an LFO that's synced to my sequence. I have it synced here from the uh, SQ64. I'm sending a pitch sequence um, to the Osiris and a trigger sequence. Uh, and I'm also sending master clock. So I actually have my master clock over here and I'm melting that to go to the performer so I can add some rhythmic effects and so I can sync my LFO. I got a square wave coming out of here that's synced to my master clock. I got the frequency going and I also have the square wave going to a VCA so I can bring this up when I want to. And I'm sending that modulation to the wave X input and that is moving uh, across my waveform horizontally and because it's doing it rhythmically it sounds really cool so like I said earlier I got the VCA built in here so I can go from real plucky to an open VCA and have longer notes and because I have my LFO on a VCA I could dial it in how I want to. I could even take this a step further and throw an envelope on my uh, VCA, but I'll just keep it simple for now. And I'm only on uh, bank A. I haven't even added any extra timbre, but let's try that. extra harmonics that I really like. And I'm still in hi-fi mode, so let's bring that down a little bit. I think I want to add another LFO. Let's go sine wave. I'm going to bring that to a VCA. Let's just try another wave because obviously there's a lot more to explore. Let's go to a totally different new bank. That is tight. Again, just a little bit of modulation. I do have some delay offered by the performer. Let's turn up the sub oscillator. Whew. This, is, this, this module is really, truly amazing. In most cases, I would have to get another oscillator, tune that up, and if I wanted to follow the lead, 
would have to mold, pitch, and just do a lot of knob twisting to get this to stay in tune as easily as this does. Really, really, really cool. So the other cool thing about the Osiris is that it has an onboard quantizer that keeps your voltage within a relative key of wherever you're at on your pitch tone. So right now, I have to quantize off. But if I turn it on, it corrects the key to what it thinks that it should be based off my tuning, really based off the fine tuning knob. The pitch keeps everything an octave. So even when you adjust the pitch, you can hear how it adjusts by octaves. And it's a coarse adjustment. is more fine, but also still moves in semitones. So it's really cool because this thing can easily be tuned up, and if you want something a little bit more wild and funky, you can always turn that quantize off and just send whatever types of notes you like. And adjust the timbre amount um, or modulate it. So let's just actually send some random. I, I, I like to have the quantize on. So let's actually add some random voltage to the timbre amount. So another nice caveat to the Osiris is the fact that you have the submix. So yeah, like I was saying, you could turn the submix all the way down. Or you can turn it up and it'll just play right along with the wave table. Or you can come out independently. And when you do this, you can get a better mix of the sub, obviously. But you can also take advantage of the uh, volt per octave input for the sub and actually run a separate pitch sequence to the sub. And it's like you get another oscillator so you're doing like a dual phonic type sequence all in one 12 HP wavetable oscillator. The subwave oscillator is independent of the VCA so you can turn your VCA down for the main oscillator and still get those plucks and just those percussive type hits all while you have your sub still sort of like playing out and decaying the way you would kind of want it to decay. It's really cool how they layered that in here. And of course, if you got a performer, take all of that, run it through the performer, and have some fun jamming out. So I was just playing with all of the waves that are already preset in the Osiris, but you can obviously design your own waves as well and upload them to a micro SD card and put them right in this slot. Uh, you could do that with using Osiris Edit that you could also download at modbatmodular.com after you purchase the Osiris, of course. Um, an Osiris uh, wave edit allows you to fully customize all of your wave tables keep the banks organized and it's something that ModBap is actually calling wave packs so that's actually a testament to the feature like moving from sample packs to wave packs I like it and I really enjoy this oscillator I had lots of fun playing with it today but this like isn't really the only way that I could use this oscillator in fact I actually want to hear about how you guys use wavetable oscillators in your Euro rack systems uh, maybe you do a lot more crazy things with modulation. Um, let me know in the comments. I would love to read and uh, learn from you all as well. So that's all I got for you guys today. I'm Fest Grandiose, signing off with Reverb. Stay safe, keep creating, and keep patching. Peace.